EIAA CEO Roger Ferguson, a contender to become Biden's Treasury Secretary, will retire from the investment giant in March, a possible clue to his future in a Biden White House, perhaps. And as Biden's staff roster starts taking shape, their traditional alliance of corporate America and Republican administrations may be upended. Paige Smith, a labor reporter for Bloomberg Law, joins me now from Washington. Paige, it's great to have you on Quick Take today. Let's start with the Roger Ferguson news today. He's a contender to become Biden's Treasury Secretary. What do we know about him and how would he affect the Biden cabinet? I've always said that being black is uh, an important part of who I am, but a We're working to... Um, Hello. Hey, Paige. Hey, sorry. I'm, I'm work, working, to, working to get you here. Uh, I'm wondering how we're seeing a, a saw right now, a clip from Roger, an interview, a recent interview with Roger Ferguson. Um, I'm curious, though, what do we know about how he would impact a Biden cabinet? Absolutely. Um, so Roger Ferguson plans to retire in March, and he is one of the most prominent black executives in finance. And his name has sort of been floated as a possible treasury, treasury secretary in the Biden administration. But, you know, it is sort of early days at this point. Biden isn't expected to name some, uh, high ranking cabinet members until next week. But um, it is sort of an early indication of the direction the administration could be taking. Well, you, you write about corporate America starting to align its values much more with a, a Biden administration than a Trump one, which I think is, is surprising for a lot of reasons, because traditionally corporate America has aligned itself with Republicans and, and Republican policies. Uh, take us through what's, what's been happening there under the Trump administration. Definitely. So under the Trump administration, there were sort of a number of steps that didn't necessarily align with the mindset of corporate America. Um, the for example, the Labor Department went after corporate giants like Microsoft and Wells Fargo for seeking to boost workforce diversity. And um, the Trump administration also turned to the Labor Department to carry out an executive order that sort of limited the kinds of diversity and inclusion trainings that a number of companies wanted to provide for workers. So there were there were limitations, if you will, put in place by the Trump administration. And at the same time, we're seeing more efforts on diversity and inclusion uh, from the top companies in the country, no? Yes. So that's definitely a shift. Um, I, I should say most companies want to take proactive steps in the direction of a more diverse and inclusive inclusive workplace and that's sometimes in response to stakeholder and activist pressures, but also sometimes um, you know, motivated by the companies themselves. Um, and I would say that this mindset also predates the killing of George Floyd and the disproportionately high death rate of black Americans from COVID-19. But those events have made this even more of a priority for corporate America. And a number of commitments have been made by large companies and um, the Biden administration, I would say, is more in line with these priorities. I think what's what's interesting about this is is a Biden administration sort of uh, uh, aligned with corporate America. It sort of sounds like strange bedfellows there because of the regulatory action or deregulatory action that the Trump administration took. Um, are there do the connections sort of between the Biden administration and corporate America, do, do they kind of stop there when it comes to just the way that his cabinet will look and the way that uh, American companies want their boardrooms to look and their their workforces to work? Or can we expect an alignment to continue in, in, in other areas, uh, perhaps much to the chagrin of, of progressives? Um, I would say I would sort of say that the the Biden administration's agenda definitely has a number of items that align with the priorities of corporate America. So some of those look like uh, an initiative to increase pay transparency and maybe some moves to take a tougher mm -hmm. approach on enforcing anti-discrimination laws among federal contractors. So there are a number of um, agencies that could sort of step into that place immediately and sort of bolstered by a strong transition team of folks who have been at those agencies previously. It's sort of an, it could be a quite a, a smooth transition, but again, that's, this is very early days and not wanting to predict anything per se, but um, that's sort of what it's 
looking like. Um, and it's also worth noting that um, much of Biden's trans transition team is made up of women and people of color. And like I said, many of them date back to the Obama administration. So some sources have been telling us that at the at a minimum, they can expect in a, uh, corporate America and companies generally can expect a return to Obama era policies. Bloomberg Law's Paige Smith in Washington. Thanks so much for your time today. We appreciate it. The biggest stories, the moment they happen from around the globe. Subscribe to Bloomberg Quick Take now for insight in an instant.